This is Paul Eckberg from the Division of Infectious Diseases at Stanford University. In this video, I'm going to provide a brief overview of the most complex class of antibiotics, the beta-lactams. This video is part one of two in which we will focus on the mechanism of action of the beta-lactams and the resistance mechanisms utilized by bacteria to block the activity of these agents. The separate part two video will focus on the characteristics of the various beta-lactam subclasses and specific agents. This slide lists the learning objectives. Explain the peptidoglycan layer synthesis and how beta-lactams inhibit it. List the four major mechanisms of resistance against the beta-lactam class. List the most common types of beta-lactamases in gram-negative bacteria. And describe how modified penicillin binding proteins, or PBPs, play a role in the gram-positive bacterial resistance to beta-lactams. This slide is a visual representation of the primary sites of activity for the four major classes or subclasses of antibacterial agents. Recall there are four major categories of bacterial targets, cell wall, outer cell membrane, nucleic acids, and ribosomes. The cell wall active agents, and specifically the transpeptidase inhibitors, highlighted in the yellow box, will be discussed in this video. The beta-lactam class of antibiotics inhibits this type of enzyme. Beta-lactams are named after their common central core, the square-shaped beta-lactam ring as seen in this picture of the basic chemical structure, represented here by a beta-lactam called amoxicillin. Differences in the properties between the beta-lactam subclasses, such as spectrum of activity and tolerability, are largely due to unique specific side chains that are synthetically attached to this core. The beta-lactams are bactericidal by inhibiting bacterial cell wall synthesis, leading to loss of cell wall integrity and eventually cell lysis. The beta-lactams have a long history of use. Physicians are very comfortable prescribing these medications because they are reliable and well tolerated. And they're commonly used, that is, they're the most commonly used class of any antibiotic in the United States. The beta-lactams are a diverse class with variable spectrum of activity between all the different subclasses and specific agents which will be discussed in the part two video, along with more detail about adverse events, some of which are listed here in the last bullet. This figure provides the basic chemical structures of the four main subclasses of beta-lactams, the penicillins, the monobactams, the cephalosporins, and the carbapenems. Again, every beta-lactam contains the core beta-lactam ring denoted by the orange squares. The blue circles show each structure's unique side chain, contributing to pharmacokinetic characteristics, outer bacterial membrane porin penetration, susceptibility to beta-lactamase enzymes, and binding to specific penicillin binding proteins, or PBPs, among other characteristics. This diagram offers a construct to help compartmentalize this very complex class of antibiotics. This is not a complete listing of every member from every group within each of the four subclasses, but it lists some of the more common members seen in clinical practice. You can immediately see that the penicillin subclass and the cephalosporin subclass are the most complex subclasses of the beta-lactams, and that they are divided into groups in the case of penicillins or generations in the case of cephalosporins. We will come back to this slide and discuss each subclass in more detail during the part two beta-lactam video. All beta-lactams inhibit synthesis of the peptidoglycan layer by binding to and inhibiting the action of transpeptidase enzymes, which are involved in the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan chains. Transpeptidases represent one of multiple type of penicillin binding proteins, or PBPs, so named because penicillins, and all other beta-lactams, bind to this enzyme to inhibit its action. These PBPs are located in the periplasmic space between the peptidoglycan layer, depicted in this cartoon as a cross-linked series of brown-colored rods, and the plasma membrane, depicted here as yellow lipid bilayer. Both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria contain peptidoglycan in their cell walls. There's a very thick outer peptidoglycan scaffolding in gram-positives, as shown in this figure, whereas quite a thin peptidoglycan layer between the outer membrane and plasma membranes are seen in gram-negative bacteria. 
This inhibitory action on the transpeptidase enzyme has a bactericidal effect, as the impaired peptidoglycan synthesis leads to loss of bacterial shape and integrity, thus leading to cell lysis and cell death. If we take a look at the peptidoglycan layer in more granularity, as seen in this figure, we see the D-alanine, depicted by the red A, is cross-linked as a red line to an adjacent L-lysine, shown by the green L. The numbered bullets walk you through the peptidoglycan synthesis pathway before, during, and after the cross-linking event. Bullet 1 reminds us that a single peptidoglycan unit prior to cross-linking consists of a pentapeptide attached to N-acetylmeramic acid, ordered alanine, glucosamine, lysine, alanine, alanine, or AGLAA. If you look at bullet 2, Cross-linking occurs between a D-alanine and a neighboring D-lysine, as I just described, eventually forming a complex peptidoglycan latticework or scaffolding that provides structural integrity to the cell, as noted in bullet 3. Beta-lactam antibiotics are structural analogs of the terminal d ala d ala structure, and once covalently bound to their PBP target, these antibiotics inhibit its activity, called transpeptidation. This figure depicts the four major mechanisms of bacterial resistance to the beta-lactam class, namely, decreased entry of the beta-lactam into the cell via porin mutations, and you can see the example here of a deficient outer membrane porin in Klebsiella species. Number two, altered target, and specifically this refers to PBP mutations, not allowing for beta-lactam binding to their target. Number three, degradation of the antibiotic once inside the cell. This is represented by beta-lactamases. And number four, removal of an antibiotic once in the cell via efflux pumps. For example, efflux pumps that are found in Pseudomonas aeruginosa as one example. We will focus on the two major starred mechanisms most commonly associated with beta-lactam resistance, described in more detail on the following slides. This includes inactivation by beta-lactamases, which is an incredibly complex group of enzymes, and altered PBPs via specific mutations, rendering the transpeptidase enzyme non-susceptible to beta-lactam binding. First, let's discuss the beta-lactamases. Resistance to beta-lactams in gram-negative bacilli are usually due to beta-lactamase production. Currently, there are over 1,000 named beta-lactamases, and there are multiple functional or sequence-based categorizations used by both microbiologists and clinicians that's far beyond the scope of this overview. Beta-lactamases might be encoded by plasmids, which can pass from bacterium to bacterium via horizontal transfer, or encoded by the bacterial chromosome itself. An example of the latter is AMPC types of beta-lactamases, which can be encoded on the chromosome of what we call space organisms. SPACE stands for Soradia marcescens, Pseudomonas aeruginosa or protea species, Acinetobacter species, Citrobacter species, and Enterobacter species. These space organisms may harbor repressed AMPC beta-lactamase genes in their chromosomes, which might come induced or derepressed during treatment with beta-lactams. In other words, space organisms can start as susceptible to beta-lactams, but become resistant during beta-lactam therapy. The three main types of beta-lactamases include number one, penicillinases, which obviously inactivate penicillins. Number two, ESBLs, which stands for extended spectrum beta-lactamases, which inactivate most beta-lactams except for carbapenems. They include things like penicillinases and cephalosporinases. ESBLs are most commonly produced by E. coli and Klebsiella species, and carbapenems are among the antibiotics of choice for infections caused by these highly resistant pathogens. Finally, number three, carbapenems have been thought of as the treatment of last resort for multi-drug resistant gram-negative infections. And unfortunately, gram-negatives that produce carbapenemases have recently emerged and spread globally. The treatment of carbapenem-resistant gram-negative pathogens is extremely challenging as these pathogens are often multi-drug resistant. 
With regard to the last type of beta-lactamases, the carbapenemases, here's a clinical example. Carbapenem-resistant enterobacteriaceae, or CRE, which are resistant to the carbapenems due to the production of carbapenemases. Carbapenems are thought of as the last line of defense for serious, multidrug-resistant, gram-negative infections. You will learn more about this beta-lactam subclass in the Part 2 video. CRE are generally resistant to all available beta-lactams and most other antibiotic classes, with the exception of polymyxins, which is an old class of antibiotics previously pulled from the shelves because of its renal toxicity and neurotoxicity. The rise in CRE resistance that you see in this graph highlights the urgent need for new agents that target CRE. Although not as complex as the beta-lactamase group of enzymes, the PBPs are a diverse group of enzymes involved in peptidoglycan synthesis and include different enzymes such as transpeptidases, the main target of the beta-lactams, carboxypeptidases, and endopeptidases. Remember that the transpeptidase type of PBP is the primary target for all beta-lactams, and there may be multiple types of PBPs in any individual bacterium. PBPs differ between bacterial species as well. With regard to beta-lactam class resistance mechanisms, altered PBPs are more commonly observed among gram-positive pathogens. Altered PBPs may be unique to a particular pathogen. For example, PBP2A is the name of the main altered PBP in MRSA. This PBP confers resistance to all beta-lactam antibiotics with one exception, ceftaroline, which is a newer cephalosporin that we'll discuss in more detail in part two. Ceftaroline offers a good example of how beta-lactams differ in their affinities for different PBB types. Let's look at MRSA, the important gram-positive pathogen, in more detail. MRSA, or methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, is a great example of the altered PBP resistance type. MRSA has emerged as an important cause of skin and soft tissue infections, lung infections such as pneumonia, and bloodstream infections. With regard to its resistance mechanisms against beta-lactam antibiotics, Staphylococcal cassette chromosome MEC, or SCC MEC, is a genomic island that contains the MEC-A gene. And MEC-A encodes PBP2A, which we just mentioned, is the altered PBP target for beta-lactam antibiotics, rendering them useless, except for ceftaroline. This pathogen will be important focus when we discuss cell membrane active compounds, such as the glycopeptides, the lipoglycopeptides, and the lipopeptides. 